The year was 1913. Woodrow Wilson was president, and powerful banking interests, who had been trying for years, finally achieved their long-term goal of a silent coup d'etat by taking control of the American government. The first thing they did to accomplish their takeover was convince Secretary of State Philander Knox to lie to the American people and tell them that the 16th Amendment, the Income Tax Amendment, had been legally ratified by the states when it was not. The bankers knew that this tax would ultimately end up in their pockets. Because of this fraud, the American people were led to believe there was now a tax on their labor. Congress and the president are completely aware of this fraud, and it was even cited in a recent court case. That very same year, the bankers committed their second and by far the most diabolical fraud ever perpetrated on the American people by bribing senators to pass the Federal Reserve Act without the required constitutional amendment. All in favor say aye. They did this during Christmas vacation, when many senators were home celebrating the holidays with their families. And that's how the unconstitutional Federal Reserve Act came into being. They were very clever, and they understood that whoever issued the money for America would control the government. The bankers won, and the American people lost, because most politicians will sell their soul for a dollar. And now the Federal Reserve could issue dollars legally. As Mayor Rothschild said, Give me control of a nation's money supply, and I care not who makes its laws. He knew that he and the other bankers would now control the laws of the nation. Government gave these bankers one of its most important powers, and now had to borrow money from them and pay interest to finance the government. So the American people were forced to lower their standard of living and pay a graduated income tax to the government just so the government could give these bankers more profits. President Woodrow Wilson, who signed the Federal Reserve Act into law, later said, in regret, I am a most unhappy man. I have unwittingly ruined my country. A great industrial nation is now controlled by its system of credit. We are no longer a government by free opinion no longer a government by conviction and the vote of the majority, but a government by the opinion and duress of a small group of dominant men. The Federal Reserve was created by Congress in 1913, and it was entrusted with the power, granted originally to the Congress by the U.S. Constitution, to coin money and regulate the value thereof. What's your name? Jan Crafting. Hi, Jan. I'm Aaron Russo. I produced the movie Trading. Is this a joke? Am I going to make No, no, no. It's not a joke. Okay. No, 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 no. I produced the movie Trading Places with Eddie Murphy and The Rose with Bette Midler. Many movies. I'm doing a feature film. And uh, my film was about my quest to find out whether or not people pay income taxes. Do you pay an income tax? Yes, I do. You do? Yeah. Have you ever seen a law that requires you to pay an income tax? Have I ever read it? You mean in the page, black and white? No, yeah. no. So you pay the income tax, I assume? Uh, of late. Well, actually, no, I didn't file last year, but... Uh, okay. I'm sorry, is this on film? No, I paid my tax. My question to you is, have you ever seen a law that says you have to pay an income tax? The law 
law is that guy that wears that badge and a gun. That's the one that puts you in jail. That's the law. Actually, I can't stand the IRS. Okay. They're okay. evil. Okay. Do you have any fear of the IRS? Um, not, not really, because I'm Canadian. I think it's actually unconstitutional, is what I've heard. Right. But, um, but to avoid any hassle, I pay it. If there was no law and I wasn't afraid of them coming and taking me to jail, absolutely, I wouldn't pay taxes. Okay, then no, I wouldn't pay income taxes. Oh. It's a no-brainer. You wouldn't pay it. I wouldn't pay it. Why would anybody? Because, they, you know, that's, that's what they tell us we must do, else we're bad Americans. Would you pay it? No. Would you pay it? No. Why so so, would you pay taxes if you don't have to? The income tax is not legal because it would be a direct tax and it is not apportioned as the Constitution demands. If it's against the Constitution, then why are we doing it? I really expected that, of course, there's a law that you can point to in the law book, the code, that requires you to file a tax return. Of course there is. I mean, I don't know what it is right then as, we, as he was speaking to me, but sure. So naively, I agreed to go off and research it and get back to him. Three and a half months later, I was at that point where I couldn't find the statute that clearly made a person liable, uh, at least not me and uh, most people I know. And I had no, no choice in my mind except to, to resign. I had to leave the IRS because I presented uh, evidence that I had accumulated indicating that the agency was violating the law and violating people's rights. And I asked the agency for a response to my sincere concerns. And the answer I got was that they would not respond to my concerns and that they would uh, provide me with the paperwork necessary to tender my resignation. But we the People Foundation for Constitutional Education put a full page ad in the USA Today on July 7, 2000. And within the body of that ad was a $50,000 challenge for anyone that could show the law. And to me, $50,000 is a lot of money. So I went after that and did the research based on the fact that I thought, let's put this baby to bed. I'm hearing all these rumors. You know, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'll answer these people's questions that are asking me. And then I'll win this $50,000. And, you know, based on the research that I did throughout the year 2000 and that I'm still doing, I have not found that law. I've asked uh, Congress, we've asked a lot of people in the IRS, the IRS commissioners, helpers. They can't answer because if they answer, the American people are going to know that this whole thing is a fraud. I was surprised to hear these highly trained and decorated IRS agents telling me there was no law requiring American citizens to file a 1040 or to pay an income tax on their labor. I haven't uh, filed an income, federal income tax return since I left. I have not filed a tax return since 1999. Approximately 67 million people don't file an income tax return. I made a decision to go to Washington so I could attend the We the People Foundation press conference. They were going to serve a class action lawsuit on the IRS signed by over 3,000 people because the IRS has refused to show the law that makes Americans liable to file a 1040 or to pay an income tax on their labor. I was very curious as to why the IRS refused to show the law, as it seems such a simple thing to do. 
Yet I was skeptical about the Foundation's claims. There had to be a law, right? I mean, we've all been told over and over and over again that we had to pay income taxes. No answers, no taxes. No answers, no taxes. No answers, no taxes. Most people believe that the income tax system is legal and that the revenue from the tax is used in the public interest. However, there is a substantial, conclusive body of evidence that proves that our income tax system represents the most pernicious form of tyranny. It is the greatest hoax ever perpetrated by government against the working men and women of America. American citizens, along with the Foundation, have been asking the IRS to specifically provide them with the, the underlying legal foundation upon which they administer and enforce the personal income tax laws in our country. At the national level, when people would attempt to contact somebody of a much higher authority, say the, cons uh, the commissioner, same kind of thing. Uh, they, wouldn't get, they would get answers that were, in effect, non-answers. There are a group of people standing outside today who uh, assert that no law requires you to pay taxes and that you will not answer their petition to the government uh, as to whether they're required to pay taxes. Are they required to pay taxes? I've been paying my taxes ever since I had my first job, and I think it, it's, a, it's a fundamental uh, construct of our nation that, that those of us who um, expect and demand the services from our government that the government provides, be they the protection of our country through the military, or be they uh, the education of our children, or be they the protection of our environment, that, that we must pay for those services. So yes, I think there is a fundamental obligation and uh, that, that it's an understood and well accepted one. Joe Bannister and I had a meeting in the White House with President Clinton's economic advisor, Jason Furman. He accepted the remonstrance for the president. On June 2nd, I called and spoke with him. His words were, we have decided that the issue of the legality of the income tax is not a high priority matter for the White House, and we will not be participating in any conference on the subject. I decided not to eat until my death or until the government agreed to send their experts to meet with the experts from the tax honesty movement. And with the help of Congressman Bartlett, a deal was made. I'm very pleased that through these uh, several trying weeks and now months, that we have secured the uh, agreement of the IRS. 